and welcome back to my youtube channel how are you my people how have you been since last week thank you so much for everybody who is subscribing to my youtube channel i truly appreciate the love and the support and to people who are new here and watching this video for the very first time continue watching sharing and subscribing and i hope that by the end of this video, you will have learned something new because my aim is to provide information about HIV and AIDS among different scopes from treatment, care, and prevention of matters HIV and AIDS. My name is Doreen Mura Muracha, a young woman living with HIV, sharing my experiences and giving you the right information to demystify HIV and AIDS stigma. So today we have a brand new video, a brand new video because it is breaking news, it is breaking news, it is breaking news. Why is it breaking news? Because the uh, five days ago, the FDA approved the use of a long-term injectable ARV, a medication or the name of the medication is called Cabenova. Cabenova is a combination of two ARV uh, regimens, which is Carbotegravil, and the other ones has the other medication has a lot of arrows and arrows. It's called Rilpivirin. Uh, I will not repeat the second name because I will bite my tongue. So this long-term injectable ARV is one of the greatest moves that we have seen because uh, one of the issues that people living with HIV face from day to day is having to take oral medication every day. We have to take a daily pill and sometimes people living with HIV go through what we call uh, treatment fatigue because it becomes very hard. Personally, I went through treatment fatigue a few years back. I stopped taking my ARVs for two years because I was tired and it's normal to get tired. It's normal if you reach somewhere and you look at your ARVs and you're like, oh my God, I need a break. Don't take the break though, but it is normal to feel overwhelmed because of taking medication. So this injectable ARV is actually magic to us. It is uh, a very huge step to people living with HIV, and it is very good news. So, the, it's now the first extended injectable drug regimen for adults living with HIV. So please note, it's not yet for children, it's just for adults, the one that has been approved. Uh, and uh, it actually makes me happy because one of the most common questions asked by people living with HIV is when are we going to stop taking medication daily to maybe a monthly or a quarterly type of medication where we can actually be able to reduce the the, the pill the pill load you know because you take a lot of pills every day 365 pills a year depending with your regimen because the people who are taking two or three drugs a day it's hard you know you become tired <laughs> like me when I became tired so uh, the good thing about this is it's actually uh, going to be a monthly drug. So it is just 12 injections the whole year. The injections are in your butt. It is your butt that is being injected uh, with the drug. But it's just 12 inje in injections, so you're good to go. And uh, it's also less demanding than pills. So that is actually a good thing. And it actually suppresses the viral load in six months time. So it is a win-win situation. You're still undetectable. And I always tell you, take your ARVs and become undetectable. Trust me, becoming undetectable is like driving a Mercedes Benz. Okay? So uh, it will help in uh, improving adherence uh, to treatment, uh, which... A to treatment basically leads to viral suppression and you become you equals to you and then you become a happy person in this life and you live a normal life like everybody else. Uh, also, this, a similar regimen uh, for children will follow. I am hoping it will follow closely because we cannot leave children behind while we are treating adults. It will be very unfair for the children of this world. So now, uh, one of the things... Uh, that about this drug is it was approved by the European Union uh, medication I don't know the, their body that approves drugs 
they approved it in December 2020 and now the FDA approved it this year to be used in the United States. So, so far it has only been approved in two regions, that is in America and the, and Europe, okay? Uh, the only issue, I have a few issues with it, okay? So, before we go to the issue, to the issues, okay? Uh, let me start by the why it was approved why it is a good drug or why it is deemed to be a good drug it's because it had is a, it has shown from the trials that 94 percent of participants injected with the regimen achieved fully viral suppressed uh, loads for at least six months so that that means it is a good thing 94 percent is a very good percent to work with because that is also no prep prep efficacy is at 96 percent so it's still a good thing. 94% is a good thing. So the injectables are to be administered by healthcare providers as two separate shots. So they will be administered as two separate shots. So it's not one shot. It's two. Two separate shots in the buttocks, in the butt, in the Kinyambisi, once a month. Okay? Uh, Cabenova, however, reduces the treatment dosage from 365 days to 12 days a year. Can you imagine? We will be taking just 12 injections one year. Uh -huh. Good news, that one. Eh? Um, this, this injectable was developed by Viv Healthcare. It's a company behind the Cabenova uh, combination that has now been approved by the U.S. The monthly injectable regimen uh, was first approved in Canada in March 2020, then by the European Union in December last year. And now it's it will benefit patients by doing away with the daily pill. We are about to stop. You know, one of the things I never thought is, I never thought I would be alive to see an injectable pill, an injectable ARV, you know? Because we have come from a time when we used to take like four or five medications in a day to now... We are taking one pill and now we are about to take an injection every month. Can you imagine? Good news, eh? Isn't that good news? Ha! Yes. So, uh, but it has a few buts. The one but is the patients who will be eligible for this injectable must be virally suppressed. You must be undetectable. So your viral load has to be low detectable, okay? Uh, you must not have history of treatment failure. So your treatment should not have failed at all. Also, you, have no, you must have no known or suspected resistance to either cabotegravir or liprivirin. So you are on the two regimens that are being used, you must not have experience because there are people right now who are actually on the Cabo, Cabo Tegravir regimen. So if you have never failed on that drug and there is no evidence of you failing on that drug, then you're good to go on the injectable. Also, uh, prior to initiating the Cabinuva oral dosing, to initiating treatment of the injection, uh, you have to be given the oral dosing uh, for approximately a month to assess the tolerability of each therapy. Why do they do this? Because sometimes you may be given medication and then your body resists the medication. So I know all of us are very happy, but there are some medications that actually the body resists itself. So there are people who might actually fail on this drug. Not because the drug is bad, no, because their body just does not like the drug. I have actually personally met two people who have failed on different ARV regimens and now they're taking very strange regimens. I, in fact, one of the ladies showed me like three pills she's taking. They're huge and scary and intimidating, but... Sometimes, and when I asked her, she told me the body refused. The body does reach a point and refuses some sort of ARV regimens. So before you start on the injectable, you must be put on the carbotegravir and rilpivirin regimen for one month, the oral ones, to see how tolerable, how your body is accepting or adjusting to it. If the body agrees with it, then the following month you are taking straight, straight approved direct injection. Okay, so 
Uh, monthly ARVs, as I mentioned before, they are a victory to patients who say that the daily pill acts as a constant reminder of HIV and can lead to their HIV status being disclosed. So it might reduce a little bit of the self-stigma and it also might reduce the story of the pill burden and uh, even treatment fatigue along the way. So <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. In the US, the new injectable will cost 400,000, that is approximately 4,000 USD a month or more than 4.8 million a year, which is 47,500 a year, $47,500 a year. So <laughs> the pricing leaves Africa behind and all developing countries in short. And uh, it does that because most of the African countries get their ARVs through donations. Let me not speak about African countries in general, but let me narrow it down to Kenya. Kenya is highly funded for ARVs. In fact, our Kenyan government has never bought a single ARV for people living with HIV by its money for the 36 years that HIV has been in the country. So trust me, the Kenyan government is not going to invest in this at 100%. They're going to ensure that it is donor funded. And I am not sure, it might take a while. Just like the DTG regimen, the DTG regimen took at least three years before it was approved to be used by everybody. And before it now came to Kenya and everybody started being phased out of the TLE uh, regimen to now we are on the TLD regimen, which is the, the dolutegravir regimen. So it will take a while for the injectable to reach Africa. And it will also take a while for it to reach any developing country. Why? Uh, Viv, the, 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 the pharmaceutical, the company behind, or the organization behind this uh, injectable says the price is within the range, within the range of HIV treatment pills in the U.S. However, I hear that in the U.S. ARVs are very pricey as compared to us who get them for free because they are donor funded by the Global Fund and by PEPFA. Those are our funders for ARVs. So, uh, in Kenya, a full dose of ARVs, the normal oral ARVs, one year costs 20000 for one patient. So, the 1.5 million people living in HIV uh, times the 20000 So, you see, the government will not spend money on us because we are living in HIV. So, basically, we might be on our own. Uh, so, just pray that donors do not go away. Okay? Pray that. Pray a lot that the donors don't go away. So, uh, this pricing might come down, like just every other year, because even when it started, when I got diagnosed very many years ago, the ARVs that were there were very pricey, but the pricing went down, 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 and now it is free because then donors stepped in. So, uh, the drugs sold uh, here. The, the 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 drugs we get the, the the ARVs we get they are generic they are not the original ones the original ARVs are very expensive probably the reason why the ARVs we take here have some side effects that I will not name today but they have some side effects and maybe that is why so the cost of our generics has been subsidized and uh, through price deals between governments and HIV drug companies. So unless such deals are negotiated for the long-acting injectables, they are likely to take years before reaching developing countries where they will still be too expensive. So unless the government comes up with a deal, I know we are very happy. People living with HIV are very happy. In fact, they have been tagging me and telling me, soon, soon you will stop taking ARVs. And I've been looking at those comments like, do I tell you the truth now or later? Because it's not an instant thing. It is a process. The approval is one thing. The reaching us, the end users, is another thing. Because that will depend with HIV drug companies, governments, and donors. So it is not just about the approval. The approval is it's usually done for many things. But the reaching us is where the problem comes in, okay? So, 
The long-acting injectables have been proven to work before. In 2019, US-based Kenyan scientist Professor Benson Idagwa created a new once-a-year formulation of carbotegravir. Uh, in November last year, a study done partly in Kenya showed that carbotegravil administered by injection every two months is 89% more efficient in preventing HIV in women compared to daily tablets of pre-exposure prophylaxis. Uh, I have not yet talked about the injectable prep. Probably I will do it after this video. So it has also been done. In fact, that one was also approved last year and uh, soon it will be out so it is it is an uh, an injectable but now this is for hiv prevention this is now for prep and it was uh, done the research was done among women and it seemed to have a 89 percent efficacy so long story short this is a very good initiative and uh, a very good research that has been done and uh oh i uh, I lifted some of those things from the Star newspaper. It was an article they did and another one from a Facebook post I did this week. So, what I'm trying to say is we are uh, living in good times, interesting times, and very nice research has come up. But we also should not stop taking our airways just because we feel, oh my God, an injectable is coming, I will wait for it. The injectable will only be dependent on your viral suppression and on how well you have been on treatment. So your, your medication history matters a lot. And as a person, me, who has defaulted before, among other things, I am not sure if I am even going it, but I know that one day it will reach reach me. So let us remain hopeful that there even talks of a HIV vaccine. So every day there is new research. So probably we will also still be alive to see a HIV cure. So hang in there, uh, stay strong, and... As we get excited, let us not forget to take our airways every day because our lives depend on them. Okay? So thank you so much for watching this video till the very end. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please leave a comment for me on the comment section and I will respond promptly. Bye. See you next week.